Hi, well, I'm Stephen Escheba, and I want to tell you a little bit about uh, obtaining an analytical expression for the uh, reversible adiabatic expansion of an ideal gas. So the uh, situation looks kind of like this. I've got an ideal gas here at a certain temperature, pressure, and volume. We're going to call those the reference uh, temperature, pressure, and volume. It undergoes this slow reversible expansion to a new temperature, pressure, and volume. Uh, and uh, with no exchange of, of heat, so uh, that's what makes it an adiabatic uh, expansion. So we know that this gas is going to cool down uh, as a result of that. Um, there's a um, the number that's going to be bigger importantly in here, which is the what we call the reduced heat capacity, CV, the um, heat capacity at constant volume, it's called, uh, which is just CV divided by N times the... Uh, the gas constant. And uh, in an indicator diagram, this is kind of what we're looking at. I've drawn a couple of boil curves here, this volume as a, and, and pressure there. Um, so these are boil isotherms. There's the starting temperature, T ref, and here's the final temperature, which I'm just calling T. Um, uh, to annotate the rest of this way, this would be called P ref, and, uh, and that would be uh, v ref, and we're going to a final uh, volume and a, and a final pressure by those values. Okay, so and I also have drawn how, uh, because this is an adiabatic reversible expansion, the gas is going to cool down. I've drawn it crossing over uh, to cooler isotherms, that is to say, that's the reference temperature, and then, and then the, uh, the final temperature is going to be colder. So, um, how do we go about this? Well, I'm assuming that we're, uh, we're starting off with this uh, equation that we uh, previously obtained, and uh, here it, it goes something like this. The relative change in the temperature for a small step along this way, dt over t, would be equal to 1 over c, that was that reduced heat capacity, times the relative change in the volume. So if this were 10%, uh, or rather, if this were a 10% uh, reduction, uh, increase in volume, we would see that after multiplying by 1 over C, uh, we could get the uh, percent reduction in the temperature. Okay, so how do we, how do we work this up to a whole story from V ref to, to big V? Well, obviously, we, we, we ought to integrate. So that's what I've kind of drawn here. The integral of uh, 1 over the temperature is just the law of temperature. The integral of that. Now I've assumed that this is a constant heat capacity, so I've just left it like that. That turns into a log v. Now that would be the definite integrals uh, once we say that we're going to evaluate that from the starting to finishing points. Then that log t will turn a log t over t ref. We have a minus c log v over v ref. Uh, nothing, nothing surprising here. I hope. Um, What's normally done here is that I'm going to is that we take that minus one over c and make it an exponent of the argument of the log, because that way we can take exponent of both sides, and that's what uh, this turns into. So t over t ref, which is what appeared here, equals v over v ref raised to the minus one over c, and uh, this is this is our uh, this is result that, that we're looking for here because it says if I know how the volume, how much volume increased over the starting volume and I know its heat capacity, then I can tell you what the, uh, what the new temperature is relative to the original temperature. Okay.